so no one asked my opinion, but I'm going to chime in anyway. Hello, 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 and the warmest of welcomes to today's video. For those of you who haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Nick, fab to have you here. For those of you who have seen my face before, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoy my videos. I put out videos roughly three times a week on a range of different topics, anywhere from fashion to some slightly more personal topics. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please do head down, hit subscribe, turn on the notification bell. I love chatting with you all. I'm all about living life loud, and what that means to me is being your authentic self, being proud to be you, and just celebrating who you are as an individual. Celebrating yourself and celebrating others. So, I'm putting my two cents into a conversation that no one asked me to join. Think about it as though I've eavesdropped on the conversation, and this was the conversation surrounding Birkins as a status symbol, and this was started by Yota and Andre. So, do go and check out their videos and their channels, I will link them below. I've also watched a number of the individuals who have um, spoken about this so far. So I've watched Dale's, I've watched Amelia's, I've watched Devon's, there was a fair few, uh, many of which I can't remember, but I'll try and link as many below as I can. So the topic is around the Birkin as a status symbol. Do, do people perceive it to be a status symbol? Is it a status symbol? Now, it's a really interesting one. My view, long story short, is that no, it is not. Um, I think it is a beautiful item. I think the quota bags are beautiful in general. Um, would I buy all of them? No. Am I in a position to buy them? No. But of them all, the Birkin would be my favourite. But I'm sure this conversation is applicable to probably, you know, the other MS quota bags. Uh, you could probably throw some Chanel's in there, etc. Do I think it's a status symbol? No. I think it's a beautiful piece. If it makes you happy, that's fantastic. But that's where it stops for me. I think if it's if it's something that you absolutely love and that you enjoy, that you can afford and you want to go and spend your money on that, that's brilliant. But you you know, I hope that you do it for the love of it rather than just feeling like you want to own an MS piece. I don't follow anyone or, you know, watch anybody who would just go out and buy something for the sake of buying it. You know, we all make mistakes. We all buy things that we think, oh, probably shouldn't have done in hindsight. But something that you genuinely know off the bat isn't going to work for you. Don't bother with it. I did do a video recently where I slightly ranted about some content I'd seen about people unboxing particularly Hermes bags and saying that they that they knew they didn't love it but they bought it anyway. That really bugs me because I think you take away the enjoyment from yourself and someone else um, f who would have loved that bag. If that's the situation that someone finds themselves in, have a good talk to yourself about why you went for it regardless. But do I see the, do I see the bags as status symbol? No, I d it wouldn't change my perception of someone. You know, some, you can be if you are kind, compassionate, friendly, encouraging, entertaining, funny, all of that good stuff, you know, you can be all of that with or without a Birkin. If you're an asshole, you can be an asshole with a Birkin as much as you can be an asshole without one. Owning a Birkin doesn't make me think any differently about you. It might make, you know, it won't make me love you anymore. It won't make me think you're less of an asshole. So, you know, think about it like that. You know, it do, It wouldn't change my perception of someone. You know, I have a different, I have a different appreciation for, you know, Bulgari jewellery versus Claire's accessories. Of course I do. I understand the quality and all of that that goes into the Bulgari stuff. Does it make me think any differently about the person who's wearing it? No, it really, really doesn't. Um, it doesn't matter to me. And that's what I think, that's why I don't think that there's a status that sits behind it. Now, one thing that I would like to pull out is that brands do have differing values. So by that, I mean financial value attached to them. You just need to go on something like Interbrand in order to see that different brands have a different value attached to them. That's how quite often they can charge what they charge, why they have the customer bases they do. Because of course, not every brand that's really high value specializes in high-end products. They have very high volume businesses. They have the market cornered in terms of a specific um, product type, for example. 
but there are the luxury brands that do hold the higher value. So I think on Interbrand, it's Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Chanel, they're kind of high ones. Um, and that's why they can charge what they charge. So in terms of their, in terms of their status as a high-end brand, they have that. But does that then automatically transfer to their client? No, I don't think it does. It's all about what does the person buying it enjoy? And that's all it needs to be. And like I said, I can look at someone with an Hermes Birkin and think, wow, what a beautiful bag. But it doesn't, it wouldn't change my perception of the person if I knew them one way or another. Like I said previously, you can be, you can be an amazing person with or without a Birkin. You can be an asshole with or without a Birkin. You can be an amazing person, you know, with or without, with a wardrobe full of Gucci. You can be an amazing person without a wardrobe full of Gucci. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's all about, luxury for me is in the eye of the beholder. It's about how something makes you feel. I made reference in a previous video to how, you know, I love a lot of my, I don't have a high, high-end collection as you're thinking about it. You know, I don't own pieces from Chanel, etc. Um, I do have Cartier and some stuff like that, but not, not many pieces of that, of that kind of product. But the items that I do own, I love. I love my Longchamp bags. I love my Kurt Geiger bags. And I smile when I use them and I smile when I wear them. And that's really all that it's about. It's about how you feel. You know, take my home, for example. I don't live in the biggest home. I live in a one bed flat, but it's, it's reflective of my personality and it makes me smile. I don't need anything bigger. I don't really want anything bigger at the moment. And it suits me perfectly. I feel really happy here. I feel really safe here. That's the main thing for me. You know, a few years ago, I used to drive a smart car. I'm sure I looked ridiculous, but I loved that car so much. And it just made me smile. Yes, there were more expensive cars. Yes, there were fancier cars. But that made me smile. And it was what I wanted to put my money into at the time. I owned it for about 18 months and I loved it. And I thought it was fantastic. So it's all about what makes you feel good and what makes you feel special. Don't do it for other people. Do it for yourself. And yeah, don't let, don't let that stuff be swayed. It's good to have common interests and it's good to have passions. You know, if you are passionate about fashion and things, that's great. And if you find someone who shares that passion with you, then develop that. But that's not based on the stuff that they have. That's based on the passion and the connection. Because you might have someone who's really passionate about the same topic as you, but your personalities don't mix. Therefore, you're not going to try and forge a relationship, or I'd hope you wouldn't, based on the fact that you, you know, both carry a Kelly or a Constance. You know, I, I think that I would like to think that people develop relationships based on the fact that they want it to, that they have similar interests and that they, you know, enjoy one another's company and chatting to one another. So I think that's really interesting. And something else that I, that I saw on basically all of the other videos that I think is so important is that YouTube is a really interesting kind of sphere where we see a lot of stuff that in the kind of outside world, you don't see that much of. Um, you see a higher concentration of certain products because we're all ingesting similar content and it's a community. So of course, within that community, you will start to see more, a higher concentration of things. But take that outside, you know, let's say that you were to stand on the street and go up to 100 people, hold up a Birkin and say, can you tell me what this is? I guarantee quite a few people probably wouldn't be able to tell you, or they might be able to say it's from a mares, maybe not get the name, or they might know it's a Birkin, but I'm sure that not everyone could tell you the size, the colour, the hardware, all of that stuff. I know that even just starting YouTube, I've learned so much about the terminology that's associated with discussing these topics versus what I knew, you know, before I started last year. So that's a really interesting point that was made by a lot of individuals. And absolutely, I think that you should love what you buy. I made a video a little while ago talking about the kind of bugbear that I have when people buy items that they're just not in love with. And I've done this and I'm wrong for doing it. But I bought items that I knew I wasn't in love with, but I went for them anyway. And I 
kind of regretted it or I had to really coach myself into liking it and that's not a great approach either. So definitely something to consider. I firmly agree with what Amelia said in her video around um, if the right thing wasn't offered, you know, I know I certainly wouldn't be buying it. I think she said a mini Kelly in kind of an array of colours or a Rose Papri Birkin 25. And for me, it would be any Birkin in a bright colour, size 35 or, or over would be my, would be my kind of go-to. But if someone came out with a black gold hardware Birkin 30, it wouldn't be for me. It wouldn't be worth putting my money into um, if I had the money to be doing that. Um, and also I know there would be so many people behind me that would love that item. And I therefore would feel terrible actually buying it for the sake of it, knowing that I didn't love it, but someone else would. I would sooner just wait my turn or turn around and, and go and buy one pre-love to make sure I got the one I wanted. But I'm doing that for me. I'm not doing that for the outside world. I'm not doing that for anyone else. I'm doing that for me. And you know, if, if, if someone does feel that, you know, luxury goods carry a status with them, then fair enough, that's their opinion, everyone's entitled to it. Um, I don't feel in my mind that they do, I don't see it that way. I, I love looking at beautiful items, but it doesn't sway my thought on the person. Um, but I, yeah, like I said, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. So there is mine. As I said, you didn't ask, I'm still telling you anyway, but I thought, I think it's interesting. And I come at this from someone who doesn't buy in that space. And I did share previously, you know, I think if, if you were to take, let's say a Chanel boy and you were to rebrand it with, let's say you were to do one version that was, you know, Givenchy and another version that was, oh, I don't know, Vivian Westwood, but the exact same everything, except for you just switched out the branding, would it be worth the same by each brand? No, it wouldn't, you know, and that's because Chanel's a brand has a value attached to it. Um, and that's okay. It's okay. That, that does happen. Certain brands carry better resale values for a reason. It's because the brand has a value. And we can't escape that. That is what it is. And good for them. They've built that. Um, but th that that probably does play a little bit into this kind of topic, but I don't think it brings status to an individual. It means that the brand has prominence, but that doesn't transfer, I don't think, to the client or the customer. And I would hope that anyone who buys from those brands does it for the love of it. I know that the items I buy are because I really want them or they fill a need in my wardrobe. You don't have to love everything you buy. If it fills a need in your life, then that's okay too. Um, so, that, that's fine as well. And you know, we all buy things that we end up regretting. We all buy things we're not 100%, but we kind of go with it or we've got that FOMO about it. Um, so, but on the whole, I think if you're buying things that you absolutely love, I don't think you can go wrong. So there's my thoughts on it. Like I said, let me know what you're thinking. This was a great idea from Andrew and Yota. Really enjoyed watching the content that I've seen so far. And I hope that you enjoy my take on this as well. Oh, quickly as well, congrats to Caleb Snell on hitting a thousand subscribers. Amazing, super excited for you. Very well deserved. Anyway, thank you so much as always for watching and I look forward to seeing my next video. Take care everyone. Bye now. Mwah.